Has a small business administration denied your application for an economic injury disaster loan due to bad credit? Today, I'm going to show you the form you need to file when you request reconsideration with a co-borrower with better credit than you, of course, as I said on my previous video. The SBA is approving many economic injury disaster loan applications that were previously denied due to bad credit when applicants request reconsideration with a co-borrower with better credit. Mind you, either you, the applicant, or your co-borrower should have a credit score of at least 570 with no open bankruptcies. According to the SBA, the agency is using the Experian Vantage Score 3.0 as the credit score to determine your repayment ability. After I said that according to the SBA, applicants need to have at least a 570 credit score and no open bankruptcies in order to be eligible to get approved for an economic injury disaster loan. A number of people are talking about, listen, I've got a 510 credit score and the SBA still approved my EIDL loan. You're fake news. Or I have a 610 credit score and the SBA declined me. Remember, the SBA is not using your FICO score, your TransUnion score, or your Equifax score. The SBA, this is coming from SBA representatives, people who work at the federal agency. What? The SBA is using the Experian Vantage Score 3.0 to evaluate whether you have the ability to pay them back and approve your economic injury disaster loan application. Watch the video until the end and I'll show you a few websites into which you can log in to retrieve the Experian Vantage Score 3.0. Here's the application. Okay, here's the form you have to file to request reconsideration with the co-borrower. First, the SBA is writing why they are requesting this information. It's so it can disburse a loan under the SBA's Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. All these organizations that were impacted by the coronavirus, etc. Feel free to call these phone numbers that the SBA lists, 1-800-659-2955. TTY 800-877-8339 or email them at disastercustomerservice at sba.gov if more space is needed for any action on this application. Please attach additional sheets and you leave all of these options blank. Just keep watching until the end of the video so I can tell you why you keep all these questions blank and I'll give you instructions on what to do once you complete the application so you can file your request for reconsideration. And you have to go down to question number 14, where it reads owner number one. You will enter the co-borrower's name if he has a title. The co-borrower does not have to have any percentage own of the business. So you can leave that part blank. Email address, social security number, date of birth, place of birth, city, state, telephone number, U.S. citizen, mailing address. Street, all of this is self-explanatory. Then you go down to question number 15. You respond to these questions. Was he convicted of a felony? These may be things that also disqualify him as a co-borrower. 16, regarding you or any owner listed on this application, are you presently subject to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction? Within the last five years, for any felony, have you been convicted or pled guilty or pled nolo contendere or been placed on pretrial diversion or been placed on any form of parole or probation, including probation before judgment? Yes or no? If yes, enter name of individual. So you got to keep these things in mind as well. And you leave the rest of these questions blank. I'll tell you why in a minute. Here are the agreements and certifications. And your co-borrower will sign next to the word signature. Date it. You attach this completed document to an email message and send it with your co-borrower request to P-D-C-R-E-C-O-N-S at SBA.gov with your application number. That's why you can keep all of those questions that I told you to leave blank, blank. Because once they're able to see your application number, then they can retrieve your file and their system will generate all of that information on your business and your personal records. 
And that's it. As promised, you can log into the following websites in order to retrieve your Experian Vantage Score 3.0. The first one I mentioned it in the previous video, nav.com. I signed up for this website and I ran into a little snag. The page loaded an error message reading that the system could not verify my identity. It produced a phone number. I called that phone number. I verified my identity and the customer service representative allowed me to log in and retrieve my Vantage score. Here are a few others. You can go to Clarity Money. It's an application you download onto your mobile device. One Main Financial. Credit.com. Self.inc. And if you know of any other websites where applicants can retrieve their Experian Vantage score 3.0, it is not your FICO score. The SBA does not use your FICO score. It uses this score. And this comes according to many accounts. The score that SBA representatives are telling applicants that they're using exactly matches applicants Experian Vantage score 3.0. So feel free to leave your comments in the comments section below. Leave your questions. Watch my previous video right here where I discuss how to get approved for an economic injury disaster loan with bad credit. Click the like button if you like the video. Click subscribe so you can stay on top of all my coverage on a stimulus package and economic injury disaster loans. Talk soon.